Radio frequency identification is the wireless non-contact use of radio frequency electromagnetic fields to transfer data, for the purposes of automatically identifying and tracking tags attached to objects. The tags contain electronically stored information. Some tags are powered by and read at short ranges via magnetic fields. Others use a local power source such as a battery, or else have no battery but collect energy from the interrogating M field, and then act as a passive transponder to emit microwaves or UHF radio waves. Battery-powered tags may operate at hundreds of meters. Unlike a barcode, the tag does not necessarily need to be within line of sight of the reader, and may be embedded in the tracked object. Radio frequency identification is part of the family of automatic identification and data capture technologies that includes 1D and 2D barcodes. RFID uses an electronic chip, usually applied to a substrate to form a label, that is affixed to a product, case, pallet or other package. The information it contains may be read, recorded, or rewritten. RFID tags are used in many industries. An RFID tag attached to an automobile during production can be used to track its progress through the assembly line. Pharmaceuticals can be tracked through warehouses. Livestock and pets may have tags injected, allowing positive identification of the animal. Since RFID tags can be attached to cash, clothing, everyday possessions, or even implanted within people, the possibility of reading personally linked information without consent has raised serious privacy concerns. History In 1945 La Copyright on Theremin invented an espionage tool for the Soviet Union which retransmitted incident radio waves with audio information. Sound waves vibrated a diaphragm which slightly altered the shape of the resonator, which modulated the reflected radio frequency. Even though this device was a cover listening device, not an identification tag, it is considered to be a predecessor of RFID technology, because it was likewise passive, being energized and activated by waves from an outside source. Similar technology, such as the IFF transponder, was routinely used by the Allies and Germany in World War II to identify aircraft as friend or foe. Transponders are still used by most powered aircraft to this day. Another early work exploring RFID is the landmark 1948 paper by Harry Stockman. Stockman predicted that considerable research and development work has to be done before the remaining basic problems in reflected power communication are solved, and before the field of useful applications is explored. Mario Cardulo's device, patented on January 23, 1973, was the first true ancestor of modern RFID as it was a passive radio transponder with memory. The initial device was passive, powered by the interrogating signal, and was demonstrated in 1971 to the New York Port Authority and other potential users and consisted of a transponder with 16-bit memory for use as a toll device. The basic Cardulo patent covers the use of RF, sound and light as transmission media. The original business plan presented to investors in 1969 showed uses in transportation, banking, security and medical. An early demonstration of reflected power RFID tags, both passive and semi-passive, was performed by Stephen Depp, Alfred Coel, and Robert Freeman at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in 1973. The portable system operated at 915 MHz and used 12-bit tags. This technique is used by the majority of today's UHFID and microwave RFID tags. The first patent to be associated with the abbreviation RFID was granted to Charles Walton in 1983. Design, Tags, a radio frequency identification system uses tags, or labels attached to the objects to be identified. Two-way radio transmitter receivers called interrogators or readers send a signal to the tag and read its response. RFID tags can be either passive, active or battery-assisted passive. An active tag has an onboard battery and periodically transmits its ID signal. A battery-assisted passive has a small battery on board and is activated when in the presence of an RFID reader. A passive tag is cheaper and smaller because it has no battery. However, to start operation of passive tags, 
they must be illuminated with a power level roughly three magnitudes stronger than for signal transmission. That makes a difference in interference and in exposure to radiation. Tags may either be read-only, having a factory-assigned serial number that is used as a key into a database, or may be read-write, where object-specific data can be written into the tag by the system user. Field programmable tags may be write once, read multiple. Blank tags may be written with an electronic product code by the user. RFID tags contain at least two parts, an integrated circuit for storing and processing information, modulating and demodulating a radio frequency signal, collecting DC power from the incident reader signal, and other specialized functions, and an antenna for receiving and transmitting the signal. The tag information is stored in a non-volatile memory. The RFID tag includes either a chip-wired logic or a programmed or programmable data processor for processing the transmission and sensor data, respectively. An RFID reader transmits an encoded radio signal to interrogate the tag. The RFID tag receives the message and then responds with its identification and other information. This may be only a unique tag serial number, or may be product-related information such as a stock number, lot or batch number, production date, or other specific information. Readers, RFID systems can be classified by the type of tag and reader. A passive reader active tag system has a passive reader which only receives radio signals from active tags. The reception range of a PRAT system reader can be adjusted from 1 euro 2000 feet, allowing flexibility in applications such as asset protection and supervision. An active reader passive tag system has an active reader, which transmits interrogator signals and also receives authentication replies from passive tags. An active reader active tag system uses active tags awoken with an interrogator signal from the active reader. A variation of this system could also use a battery assisted passive tag which acts like a passive tag but has a small battery to power the tag's return reporting signal. Fixed readers are set up to create a specific interrogation zone which can be tightly controlled. This allows a highly defined reading area for when tags go in and out of the interrogation zone. Mobile readers may be handheld or mounted on carts or vehicles. Frequencies, signaling, signaling between the reader and the tag is done in several different incompatible ways, depending on the frequency band used by the tag. Tags operating on LF and HF bands are, in terms of radio wavelength, very close to the reader antenna because they are only a small percentage of a wavelength away. In this near field region, the tag is closely coupled electrically with the transmitter and the reader. The tag can modulate the field produced by the reader by changing the electrical loading the tag represents. By switching between lower and higher relative loads, the tag produces a change that the reader can detect. At UHF and higher frequencies, the tag is more than one radio wavelength away from the reader, requiring a different approach. The tag can backscatter a signal. Active tags may contain functionally separated transmitters and receivers, and the tag need not respond on a frequency related to the reader's interrogation signal. An electronic product code is one common type of data stored in a tag. When written into the tag by an RFID printer, the tag contains a 96-bit string of data. The first 8 bits are a header which identifies the version of the protocol. The next 28 bits identify the organization that manages the data for this tag. The organization number is assigned by the EP Global Consortium. The next 24 bits are an object class, identifying the kind of product. The last 36 bits are a unique serial number for a particular tag. These last two fields are set by the organization that issued the tag. Rather like a URL. The total electronic product code number can be used as a key into a global database to uniquely identify a particular product. Often more than one tag will respond to a tag reader, for example, many individual products with tags may be shipped in a common box or on a common pallet. Collision detection is important to allow reading of data. Two different types of protocols are used to singulate a particular tag, allowing its data to be read in the midst of many similar tags. In a slotted Aloha system, 
the reader broadcasts an initialization command and a parameter that the tags individually use to pseudo-randomly delay their responses. When using an adaptive binary tree protocol, the reader sends an initialization symbol and then transmits one bit of ID data at a time. Only tags with matching bits respond, and eventually only one tag matches the complete ID string. Both methods have drawbacks when used with many tags or with multiple overlapping readers. Bulk reading is a strategy for interrogating multiple tags at the same time, but lacks sufficient precision for inventory control. Miniaturization RFIDs are easy to conceal or incorporate in other items. For example, in 2009 researchers at Bristol University successfully glued RFID microtransponders to live ants in order to study their behavior. This trend towards increasingly miniaturized RFIDs is likely to continue as technology advances. Hitachi holds the record for the smallest RFID chip, at 0.05 mm a 0.05 mm. This is 1 slash 64th the size of the previous record holder, the MU chip. Manufacture is enabled by using the silicon on insulator process. These dust sized chips can store 38 digit numbers using 128 bit read only memory. A major challenge is the attachment of antennas, thus limiting read range to only millimeters. Uses The RFID tag can be affixed to an object and used to track and manage inventory, assets, people, etc. For example, it can be affixed to cars, computer equipment, books, mobile phones, etc. RFID offers advantages over manual systems or use of barcodes. The tag can be read if passed near a reader, even if it is covered by the object or not visible. The tag can be read inside a case, carton, box or other container, and unlike barcodes, RFID tags can be read hundreds at a time. Barcodes can only be read one at a time using current devices. In 2011, the cost of passive tags started at $0.09 cents each. Special tags, meant to be mounted on metal or withstand gamma sterilization, can go up to $5. US Active tags for tracking containers, medical assets, or monitoring environmental conditions in data centers start at $50 US and can go up over $100 US each. Battery-assisted passive tags are in the $3 US a Euro 10 range and also have sensor capability like temperature and humidity. RFID can be used in a variety of applications, such as access management, tracking of goods, tracking of persons and animals, toll collection and contactless payment, machine-readable travel documents, smart dust, tracking sports memorabilia to verify authenticity, airport baggage tracking logistics, timing sporting events. In 2010 three key factors drove a significant increase in RFID usage, decreased cost of equipment and tags, increased performance to a reliability of 99.9% .9 and a stable international standard around UHF passive RFID. The adoption of these standards were driven by EP Global, a joint venture between GS1 and GS1 US which were responsible for driving global adoption of the barcode in the 1970s and 1980s. The EP Global Network was developed by the Auto ID Center, an academic research project headquartered at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology with labs at five leading research universities around the globe, Cambridge, Adelaide, Kirio, Shanghai, Futan, St. Gallen. At RFID Journal Live 2010 in Orlando. Airbus detailed 16 active projects, IBM and a Euro most recently added to the team a Euro CSC. The two other areas of significant use are financial services for IT asset tracking and healthcare. RFID is becoming increasingly prevalent as the price of the technology decreases. Commerce, the value of the RFID market in 2012 was projected to be 7.46 billion US dollars versus 6.37 billion US dollars in 2011. The RFID world market is estimated to surpass 20 billion US dollars by 2014. Payment by mobile phones, since summer 2009, two credit card companies have been working with Dallas, Texas-based device Fidelity to develop specialized micro SD cards. When inserted into a mobile phone, 
The microSD card can be both a passive tag and an RFID reader. After inserting the microSD, a user's phone can be linked to bank accounts and used in mobile payment. Dairy Queen in conjunction with Vivotech has also begun using RFIDs on mobile phones as part of their new loyalty and rewards program. Patrons can ask to receive an RFID tag to place on their phone. After activation, the phone can receive promotions and coupons, which can be read by Vivotech's specialized near-field communication devices. Similarly, 7-Eleven has been working alongside MasterCard to promote a new touch-free payment system. Those joining the trial are given a complimentary Nokia 3220 cell for near a euro after activation, it can be used as an RFID-capable MasterCard credit card at any of 7-Eleven's worldwide chains. Nokia's 2008 device, the 6212, has RFID capabilities also. Credit card information can be stored, and bank accounts can be directly accessed using the enabled handset. The phone, if used as a vector for mobile payment, has added security in that users would be required to enter a passcode or PIN before payment is authorized. Asset management, RFID combined with mobile computing and web technologies provide a way for organizations to identify and manage their assets. Mobile computers, with integrated RFID readers, can now deliver a complete set of tools that eliminate paperwork, give proof of identification and attendance. This approach eliminates manual data entry. Web-based management tools allow organizations to monitor their assets and make management decisions from anywhere in the world. Web-based applications now mean that third parties, such as manufacturers and contractors can be granted access to update asset data, including for example, inspection history and transfer documentation online ensuring that the end user always has accurate, real-time data. Organizations are already using RFID tags combined with a mobile asset management solution to record and monitor the location of their assets, their current status, and whether they have been maintained. RFID is being adopted for item-level retail users. Aside from efficiency and product availability gains, the system offers a superior form of electronic article surveillance, and a superior self-checkout process for consumers. 2009 witnessed the beginning of wide-scale asset tracking with passive RFID. Wells Fargo and Bank of America made announcements that they would track every item in their data centers using passive RFID. Most of the leading banks have since followed suit. The Financial Services Technology Consortium set a technical standard for tagging IT assets and other industries have used that standard as a guideline. For instance the United States Department of State is now tagging IT assets with passive RFID using the ISO IEC 18000-6 standard. Inventory Systems, an advanced automatic identification technology based on RFID technology has significant value for inventory systems. The system can provide accurate knowledge of the current inventory. In an academic study performed at Walmart, RFID reduced out of stocks by 30% for products selling between 0.1 and 15 units a day. The RFID can also help the company to ensure the security of the inventory. With the just-in-time tracking of inventory through RFID, the computer data can show whether the inventory stored in the warehouse is correct with quantity currently. Other benefits of using RFID include the reduction of labor costs, the simplification of business processes, and the reduction of inventory inaccuracies. In 2004, Boeing integrated the use of RFID technology to help reduce maintenance and inventory costs on the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. With the high costs of aircraft parts, RFID technology allowed Boeing to keep track of inventory despite the unique sizes, shapes and environmental concerns. During the first six months after integration, the company was able to save $29,000 in labor. Airbus began an RFID program in 2006 that received the 2008 Best RFID Deployment Award at the RFID Journal Live event. In 2007, Recall Corporation integrated the use of RFID to help organizations track and audit their records, to support compliance with regulations such as the Sarbanese Euro Oxley Act and HIPAA, product tracking, 
RFID use in product tracking applications begins with plant-based production processes, and then extends into post-sales configuration management policies for large buyers. In 2005, the Wynn Casino, Las Vegas, began placing individual RFID tags on high-value chips. These tags allowed casinos the ability to detect counterfeit chips, track betting habits of individual players, speed up chip tallies, and determine counting mistakes of dealers. In 2010, the Bellagio Casino was robbed of $1.50 million in chips. The RFID tags of these chips were immediately invalidated, thus making the cash value of these chips $0. RFID can also be used for supply chain management in the fashion industry. The RFID label is attached to the garment at production, can be red traced throughout the entire supply chain and is removed at the point of sale. Access control, RFID tags are widely used in identification badges, replacing earlier magnetic stripe cards. These badges need only be held within a certain distance of the reader to authenticate the holder. Tags can also be placed on vehicles, which can be read at a distance, to allow entrance to controlled areas without having to stop the vehicle and present a card or enter an access code. Social media, in 2010 Vail Resorts began the Epic Mix program to allow skiers to earn virtual badges, compete for vertical feet skied and other milestones using UHF passive or FID tags and ski passes. The Epic Mix system not only allowed automated social sharing and capturing of ski data but also streamlined the verification process which used to be performed by using a barcode and line-of-sight scanner. Soon other brands began adopting this method and in 2013 it has become a growing area of use for RFID. Facebook is using RFID cards at most of their live events to allow guests to automatically capture and post photos. The automotive brands have adopted RFID for social media product placement more quickly than other industries. Mercedes was an early adopted in 2011 at the PGA Golf Championships, and by the 2013 Geneva Motor Show many of the larger brands were using RFID for social media marketing. Promotion tracking, to prevent retailers diverting products, Manufacturers are exploring the use of RFID tags on promoted merchandise so that they can track exactly which product has sold through the supply chain at fully discounted prices. Transportation and logistics Logistics and transportation are major areas of implementation for RFID technology. Yard management, shipping and freight and distribution centers use RFID tracking technology. In the railroad industry, RFID tags mounted on locomotives and rolling stock identify the owner, identification number and type of equipment and its characteristics. This can be used with a database to identify the lading, origin, destination, etc. of the commodities being carried. In commercial aviation, RFID technology is being incorporated to support maintenance on commercial aircraft. RFID tags are used to identify baggage and cargo at several airports and airlines. Some countries are using RFID technology for vehicle registration and enforcement. RFID can help detect and retrieve stolen cars. Intelligent transportation systems. RFID technology is also used in intelligent transportation systems. In New York City. RFID readers are deployed at intersection to track EZPASS tags as a mean to for monitoring traffic flow. The data is fed through the government-dedicated broadband wireless infrastructure to the traffic management center to be used in adaptive traffic control of the traffic lights. Hose stations and conveyance of fluids, the RFID antenna in a permanently installed coupling half unmistakably identifies the RFID transponder placed in the other coupling half after completed coupling. When connected the transponder of the free part transmits all important information contactless to the fixed part. The coupling Euro unregistered trademark S location can be clearly identified by the RFID transponder coding. The control is enabled to automatically start subsequent process steps. Public transport, RFID cards are used for access control to public transport. In London travellers use Oyster cards on the tube, buses and ferries. It identifies the traveller at each turnstile and so the system can calculate the fare. 
infrastructure management and protection, at least one company has introduced RFID technology to identify and locate underground infrastructure assets such as gas pipelines, sewer lines, electrical cables, communication cables, etc. Passports The first RFID passports were issued by Malaysia in 1998. In addition to information also contained on the visual data page of the passport, Malaysian e-passports record the travel history of entries and exits from the country. Other countries that insert RFID in passports include Norway, Japan, most EU countries, Australia, Hong Kong, the United States, India, Serbia, Republic of Korea, Taiwan, Albania, the Philippines, Republic of Macedonia, and Canada. Standards for RFID passports are determined by the International Civil Aviation Organization, and are contained in ICAO Document 9303, Part 1, Volumes 1 and 2. ICAO refers to the ISO IEC 14443 RFID chips in e-passports as contactless integrated circuits. ICAO standards provide for e-passports to be identifiable by a standard e-passport logo on the front cover. Since 2006, RFID tags included in new United States passports will store the same information that is printed within the passport, and include a digital picture of the owner. The United States Department of State initially stated the chips could only be read from a distance of 10 centimeters, but after widespread criticism and a clear demonstration that special equipment can read the test passports from 10 meters away. The passports were designed to incorporate a thin metal lining to make it more difficult for unauthorized readers to skim information when the passport is closed. The department will also implement basic access control, which functions as a personal identification number in the form of characters printed on the passport data page. Before a passport's tag can be read, this PIN must be entered into an RFID reader. The BAC also enables the encryption of any communication between the chip and interrogator. Transportation payments, in many countries, RFID tags can be used to pay for mass transit fares on bus, trains, or subways, or to collect tolls on highways. Some bike lockers are operated with RFID cards assigned to individual users. A prepaid card is required to open or enter a facility or locker and is used to track and charge based on how long the bike is parked. The Zipcar car sharing service uses RFID cards for locking and unlocking cars and for member identification. In Singapore, RFID replaces paper season parking ticket. Animal identification RFID tags for animals represent one of the oldest uses of RFID technology. Originally meant for large ranches and rough terrain, since the outbreak of mad cow disease, RFID has become crucial in animal identification management. An implantable RFID tag or transponder can also be used for animal identification. The transponders are more well known as passive RFID technology, or chips on animals. The Canadian Cattle Identification Agency began using RFID tags as a replacement for barcode tags. Currently CCIA tags are used in Wisconsin and by United States farmers on a voluntary basis. The USDA is currently developing its own program. RFID tags are required for all cattle, sheep and goats sold in Australia. Human Identification Implantable RFID chips designed for animal tagging are now being used in humans. An early experiment with RFID implants was conducted by British professor of cybernetics Kevin Warwick, who implanted a chip in his arm in 1998. In 2004 Conrad Chase offered implanted chips in his nightclubs in Barcelona and Rotterdam to identify their VIP customers, who in turn use it to pay for drinks. The Food and Drug Administration in the United States has approved the use of RFID chips in humans. Some business establishments give customers the option of using an RFID-based tab to pay for service, such as the Barja Beach nightclub in Barcelona. This has provoked concerns into privacy of individuals as they can potentially be tracked wherever they go by an identifier unique to them. There are concerns this could lead to abuse by an authoritarian government to removal of freedoms, 
and to the emergence of the ultimate panopticon, a society where all citizens behave in a socially accepted manner because others might be watching. On July 22, 2006, Reuters reported that two hackers, Nwitz and Wasthuse, at a conference in New York City showed that they could clone the RFID signal from a human implanted RFID chip, showing that the chip is not hackproof as was previously claimed. Privacy advocates have protested against implantable RFID chips, warning of potential abuse. There is much controversy regarding human applications of this technology, and many conspiracy theories abound in relation to human applications, especially one of which is referred to as the mark of the beast in some religious circles. Institutions, hospitals and healthcare, adoption of RFID in the medical industry has been widespread and very effective. Hospitals are among the first users to combine both active and passive RFID technology. Many successful deployments in the healthcare industry have been cited where active technology tracks high value, or frequently moved items, where passive technology tracks smaller, lower cost items that only need room level identification. For example, medical facility rooms can collect data from transmissions of RFID badges worn by patients and employees as well as from tags assigned to facility assets, such as mobile medical devices. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs recently announced plans to deploy RFID in hospitals across America to improve care and reduce costs. A physical RFID tag may be incorporated with browser-based software to increase its efficacy. This software allows for different groups or specific hospital staff, nurses, and patients to see real-time data relevant to each piece of tracked equipment or personnel. Real-time data is stored and archived to make use of historical reporting functionality and to prove compliance with various industry regulations. This combination of RFID real-time locating system hardware and software provides a powerful data collection tool for facilities seeking to improve operational efficiency and reduce costs. The trend is toward using ISO 18000-6C as the tag of choice and combining an active tagging system that relies on existing 802.11x wireless infrastructure for active tags. Since 2004 a number of U.S. hospitals have begun implanting patients with RFID tags and using RFID systems, usually for workflow and inventory management. The use of RFID to prevent mix-ups between sperm and over in IVF clinics is also being considered. In October 2004, the FDA approved USA's first RFID chips that can be implanted in humans. The 134 kHz RFID chips, from Very Chip Corporation can incorporate personal medical information and could save lives and limit injuries from errors in medical treatments, according to the company. Anti-RFID activists Catherine Albrecht and Liz McIntyre discovered an FDA warning letter that spelled out health risks. According to the FDA, these include adverse tissue reaction, migration of the implanted transponder, failure of implanted transponder, electrical hazards, and magnetic resonance imaging MRI incompatibility. Libraries Libraries have used RFID to replace the barcodes on library items. The tag can contain identifying information or may just be a key into a database. An RFID system may replace or supplement barcodes and may offer another method of inventory management and self-service checkout by patrons. It can also act as a security device, taking the place of the more traditional electromagnetic security strip. It is estimated that over 30 million library items worldwide now contain RFID tags including some in the Vatican Library in Rome. Since RFID tags can be read through an item, there is no need to open a book cover or DVD case to scan an item, and a stack of books can be read simultaneously. Book tags can be read while books are in motion on a conveyor belt, which reduces staff time. This can all be done by the borrowers themselves, reducing the need for library staff assistance. With portable readers, Inventories could be done on a whole shelf of materials within seconds. However, as of 2008 this technology remains too costly for many smaller libraries, and the conversion period has been estimated at 11 months for an average size library.
A 2004 Dutch estimate was that a library which lends 100,000 books per year should plan on a cost of above 50,000. RFID taking a large burden off staff could also mean that fewer staff will be needed, resulting in some of them getting laid off, but that has so far not happened in North America where recent surveys have not returned a single library that cut staff because of adding RFID. In fact, library budgets are being reduced for personnel and increased for infrastructure, making it necessary for libraries to add automation to compensate for the reduced staff size. Also, the tasks that RFID takes over are largely not the primary tasks of librarians. A finding in the Netherlands is that borrowers are pleased with the fact that staff are now more available for answering questions. Privacy concerns have been raised surrounding library use of RFID. Because some RFID tags can be read from up to 100 meters, there is some concern over whether sensitive information could be collected from an unwilling source. However, library RFID tags do not contain any patron information, and the tags used in the majority of libraries use a frequency only readable from approximately 10 feet. Further, another non-library agency could potentially record the RFID tags of every person leaving the library without the library administrator's knowledge or consent. One simple option is to let the book transmit a code that has meaning only in conjunction with the library's database. Another possible enhancement would be to give each book a new code every time it is returned. In future, should readers become ubiquitous, then stolen books could be traced even outside the library. Tag removal could be made difficult if the tags are so small that they fit invisibly inside a page, possibly put there by the publisher. Museums, RFID technologies are now also implemented in end-user applications in museums. An example was the Custom Design Temporary Research Application, EXSPOT, at the Exploratorium, a science museum in San Francisco, California. A visitor entering the museum received an RF tag that could be carried as a card. The EXSPOT system enabled the visitor to receive information about specific exhibits. Aside from the exhibit information, the visitor could take photographs of themselves at the exhibit. It was also intended to allow the visitor to take data for later analysis. The collected information could be retrieved at home from a personalized website keyed to the RFID tag. Schools and universities, school authorities in the Japanese city of Osaka are now chipping children's clothing, backpacks, and student IDs in a primary school. A school in Doncaster, England is piloting a monitoring system designed to keep tabs on pupils by tracking radio chips in their uniforms. St. Charles Sixth Form College in West London, England, started September, 2008, is using an RFID card system to check in and out of the main gate, to both track attendance and prevent unauthorized entrance. Similarly, Whitcliffe Mount School in Cleckheaton, England uses RFID to track pupils and staff in and out of the building via a specially designed card. In the Philippines, some schools already use RFID in IDs for borrowing books and also gates in those particular schools have RFID ID scanners for buying items at a school shop and canteen, library and also to sign in and sign out for student and teacher's attendance. Sports RFID for timing races began in the early 1990s with pigeon racing, introduced by the company Duster Electronics in Germany. RFID can provide race start and end timings for individuals in large races where it is impossible to get accurate stopwatch readings for every entrant. In the race, the races wear tags that are read by antennae placed alongside the track or on mats across the track. UHF tags provide accurate readings with specially designed antennas. Rush error, lap count errors and accidents at start time are avoided since anyone can start and finish any time without being in a batch mode. The design of chip plus antenna controls the range from which it can be read. Short range compact chips are twist tied to the shoe or velcro strap the ankle. These need to be about 400 mm from the mat and so give very good temporal resolution. Alternatively a chip plus a very large antenna can be incorporated into the bib number worn on the athlete's chest at about 1.25 m height. Passive and active RFID systems are used in off-road events such as orienteering, enduro and hare and hounds racing. 
riders have a transponder on their person, normally on their arm. When they complete a lap they swipe or touch the receiver which is connected to a computer and log their lap time. RFID is being adapted by many recruitment agencies which have a PET as their qualifying procedure especially in cases where the candidate volumes may run into millions. A number of ski resorts have adopted RFID tags to provide skiers hands-free access to ski lifts. Skiers do not have to take their passes out of their pockets. Ski jackets have a left pocket into which the chip plus card fits. This nearly contacts the sensor unit on the left of the turnstile as the skier pushes through to the lift. These systems were based on high frequency at 13.56 MHz. The bulk of ski areas in Europe, from Verbia to Camonix use these systems. Complement to barcode, RFID tags are often a complement, but not a substitute, for UPC or EAN barcodes. They may never completely replace barcodes, due in part to their higher cost and the advantage of multiple data sources on the same object. Also, unlike RFID labels, barcodes can be generated and distributed electronically, for example via email or mobile phone, for printing or display by the recipient. An example is airline boarding passes. The new EPC, along with several other schemes, is widely available at reasonable cost. The storage of data associated with tracking items will require many terabytes. Filtering and categorizing RFID data is needed to create useful information. It is likely that goods will be tracked by the pallet using RFID tags, and at package level with universal product code or EAN from unique barcodes. The unique identity is a mandatory requirement for RFID tags, despite special choice of the numbering scheme. RFID tag data capacity is large enough that each individual tag will have a unique code, while current barcodes are limited to a single type code for a particular product. The uniqueness of RFID tags means that a product may be tracked as it moves from location to location, finally ending up in the consumer's hands. This may help to combat theft and other forms of product loss. The tracing of products is an important feature that gets well supported with RFID tags containing a unique identity of the tag and also the serial number of the object. This may help companies cope with quality deficiencies and resulting recall campaigns, but also contributes to concern about tracking and profiling of consumers after the sale. It has also been proposed to use RFID for POS store checkout to replace the cashier with an automatic system which needs no barcode scanning. In the past this was not possible due to the higher cost of tags and existing POS process technologies. However, industry standard, a couture shop and recording studio in Ohio has successfully implemented a POS procedure that allows faster transaction throughput. An FDA-nominated task force concluded, after studying the various technologies currently commercially available, which of those technologies could meet the pedigree requirements. Amongst all technologies studied including barcoding, RFID seemed to be the most promising and the committee felt that the pedigree requirement could be met by easily leveraging something that is readily available. Telemetry Active RFID tags also have the potential to function as low-cost remote sensors that broadcast telemetry back to a base station. Applications of tegometry data could include sensing of road conditions by implanted beacons, weather reports, and noise level monitoring. Passive RFID tags can also report sensor data. For example, the wireless identification and sensing platform is a passive tag that reports temperature, acceleration and capacitance to commercial Gen 2 RFID readers. It is possible that active or battery-assisted passive RFID tags, used with or in place of barcodes, could broadcast a signal to an in-store receiver to determine whether the RFID tag is in the store. Mandates Walmart and the United States Department of Defense have published requirements that their vendors place RFID tags on all shipments to improve supply chain management. Due to the size of these two organizations, their RFID mandates impact thousands of companies worldwide. The deadlines have been extended several times because many vendors face significant difficulties implementing RFID systems. In practice, 
the successful read rates currently run only 80%, due to radio wave attenuation caused by the products and packaging. In time it is expected that even small companies will be able to place RFID tags on their outbound shipments. Walmart In January 2005, Walmart required its top 100 suppliers to apply RFID labels to all shipments. To meet this requirement, vendors use RFID printer encoders to label cases and pallets that require EPC tags for Walmart. These smart labels are produced by embedding RFID inlays inside the label material, and then printing barcode and other visible information on the surface of the label. In October 2005 the University of Arkansas Information Technology Research Institute released a report on its preliminary study of the impact of RFID on reducing retail out-of-stocks and concluded that RFID reduced out-of-stocks by 21% over non-RFID-based stores. Two years later the Wall Street Journal published an article titled Walmart's Radio Tracked Inventory Hits Static. The article stated that the RFID plan set forth by Walmart was showing signs of fizzling due to a lack of progress by Walmart executives to introduce the technology to its stores and to the lack of incentives for suppliers. U.S. Department of Defense the duty requirements for RFID tags on packages of military supplies is prescribed in the Defense Federal Acquisition Regulations Supplement 252.211-7006. Positioning of the tag needs to be completed in accordance with the clause and definitions in MIL 129 Sartom and Principe Dobras and as of March 1, 2007, EPC Global Tags must comply with EP Global Class 1 Generation 2 specification. Regulation and standardization, a number of organizations have set standards for RFID, including the International Organization for Standardization, the International Electrotechnical Commission, ASTM International, the DASH7 Alliance and EP Global. There are also several specific industries that have set guidelines. These industries include the Financial Services Technology Consortium which has set a standard for tracking IT assets with RFID, the Computer Technology Industry Association CompTIA which has set a standard for certifying RFID engineers, and the International Airlines Transport Association IATA which has set tagging guidelines for luggage in airports. In principle, every country can set its own rules for frequency allocation for RFID tags and not all radio bands are available in all countries. These frequencies are known as the ISM bands. The return signal of the tag may still cause interference for other radio users. Low frequency tags and high frequency tags can be used globally without a license. Ultra high frequency tags cannot be used globally as there is no single global standard. In North America, UHF can be used unlicensed for 900 to a euro 928 MHz, but restrictions exist for transmission power. In Europe, RFID and other low-power radio applications are regulated by ETSI recommendations EN 300-220 and EN 300-208, and ERO recommendation 7003 allowing RFID operation with somewhat complex band restrictions from 865 a euro 868 MHz. Readers are required to monitor a channel before transmitting. This requirement has led to some restrictions on performance, the resolution of which is a subject of current research. The North American UHF standard is not accepted in France as it interferes with its military bands. On July 25, 2012, Japan changed its UHF band to 920 MHz, more closely matching the United States a Euro unregistered trademark 915 MHz band. For China, there is no regulation for the use of UHF. Each application for UHF in these countries needs a site license, which needs to be applied for at the local authorities, and can be revoked. For Australia and New Zealand, 918 a euro 926 a MHz are unlicensed, but restrictions exist for transmission power. Standards that have been made regarding RFID technology include, ISO 14223 a euro radio frequency, SIG identification of animals a euro advanced transponders, ISO IEC 14443, 
This standard is a popular HF standard for high FIDs which is being used as the basis of RFID-enabled passports under ICAO 9303. The near-field communication standard that lets mobile devices act as RFID readers transponders is also based on ISO IEC 14443. ISO IEC 15693, this is also a popular HF standard for high FIDs widely used for non-contact smart payment and credit cards. ISO IEC 18000, Information Technologia Euro Radio Frequency Identification for Item Management, Part 1, Reference Architecture and Definition of Parameters to be Standardized, Part 2, Parameters for Air Interface Communications Below 135 kHz, Part 3, Parameters for Air Interface Communications at 13.56 MHz, Part 4, Parameters for Air Interface Communications at 2.45 GHz, Part 6, Parameters for Air Interface Communications at 860 Euro 960 MHz, Part 7, Parameters for Active Air Interface Communications at 433 MHz. ISO IEC 18092 Information Technology Euro Telecommunications and Information Exchange between Systems A Euro Near Field Communication A Euro Interface and Protocol, ISO 18185. This is the industry standard for electronic seals or e seals for tracking cargo containers using the 433 MHz and 2.4 GHz frequencies. ISO IEC 21481 Information Technology Euro Telecommunications and Information Exchange between Systems A Euro Near Field Communication Interface and Protocol-2, ASTM D 7434, Standard Test Method for Determining the Performance of Passive Radio Frequency Identification Transponders on Palletized or Unitized Loads, ASTM D 7435. Standard test method for determining the performance of passive radio frequency identification transponders on loaded containers, ASTM D7580. Standard test method for rotary stretch wrapper method for determining the readability of passive RFID transponders on homogeneous palletized or unitized loads. ISO 28560 2 specifies encoding standards and data model to be used within libraries. In order to ensure global interoperability of products, several organizations have set up additional standards for RFID testing. These standards include conformance, performance and interoperability tests. Groups concerned with standardization are, DASH7 Alliance Euro an international industry group formed in 2009 to promote standards and interoperability among extensions to ISO IEC 18000-7 technologies. At Global Euro this is the standardization framework that is most likely to undergo international standardization according to ISO rules as with all sound standards in the world, unless residing with limited scope, as customs regulations, air traffic regulations and others. Currently the big distributors and governmental customers are pushing EPC heavily as a standard well accepted in their community, but not yet regarded as for salvation to the rest of the world. EPC Gen 2, EPC Gen 2 is short for EP Global UHF Class 1 Generation 2. EP Global, a joint venture between GS1 and GS1 US, is working on international standards for the use of mostly passive RFID and the electronic product code in the identification of many items in the supply chain for companies worldwide. One of the missions of EP Global was to simplify the babel of protocols prevalent in the RFID world in the 1990s. Two tag air interfaces were defined by EP Global prior to 2003. These protocols, commonly known as Class 0 and Class 1, saw significant commercial implementation in 2002 a Euro 2005. In 2004, the Hardware Action Group created a new protocol, the Class 1 Generation 2 interface, which addressed a number of problems that had been experienced with Class 0 and Class 1 tags. The EPC Gen 2 standard was approved in December 2004. This was approved after a contention from Intimc that the standard may infringe a number of their RFID-related patents. It was decided that the standard itself does not infringe their patents, making the standard royalty-free. 
The EPC Gen 2 standard was adopted with minor modifications as ISO 18000-6C in 2006. The lowest cost of Gen 2 EPC inlay was offered by the now defunct company Smart Code, at a price of 5 cents a piece in volumes of 100 million or more. Nevertheless, further conversion end of the inlays into usable RFID labels and the design of current Gen 2 protocol standard will increase the total end cost especially with the added security feature extensions for RFID supply chain item level tagging. Problems and concerns Data flooding, not every successful reading of a tag is useful for business purposes. A large amount of data may be generated that is not useful for managing inventory or other applications. For example, a customer moving a product from one shelf to another, or a pallet load of articles that passes several readers while being moved in a warehouse, are events that do not produce data that is meaningful to an inventory control system. Event filtering is required to reduce this data inflow to a meaningful depiction of moving goods passing a threshold. Various concepts have been designed, mainly offered as middleware performing the filtering from noisy and redundant raw data to significant process data. Global standardization the frequencies used for UHF RFID in the USA are currently incompatible with those of Europe or Japan. Furthermore, no emerging standard has yet become as universal as the barcode. To address international trade concerns, it is necessary to use a tag that is operational within all of the international frequency domains. Security concerns Retailers such as Walmart, which already heavily use RFID technology for inventory purposes, also use RFID as an anti-employee theft and anti-shoplifting technology. If a product with an active RFID tag passes the exit scan is at a Walmart outlet, not only does it set off an alarm, but it also tells security personnel exactly what product to look for in the shopper's cart. A primary RFID security concern is the illicit tracking of RFID tags. Tags, which are world-readable, pose a risk to both personal location privacy and corporate military security. Such concerns have been raised with respect to the United States Department of Defense's recent adoption of RFID tags for supply chain management. More generally, privacy organizations have expressed concerns in the context of ongoing efforts to embed electronic product code RFID tags in consumer products. This is mostly as a result of the fact that RFID tags can be read, and legitimate transactions with readers can be eavesdropped, from non-trivial distances. RFID technology used in access control, payment and EID systems operate at a shorter range than EPC RFID systems but are also vulnerable to skimming and eavesdropping, albeit at shorter distance. A second method of prevention is by using cryptography. Rolling codes and challenge response authentication are commonly used to foil monitor repetition of the messages between the tag and reader. As any messages that have been recorded would prove to be unsuccessful on repeat transmission. Rolling codes rely upon the tags at being changed after each interrogation, while CRA uses software to ask for a cryptographically coded response from the tag. The protocols used during CRA can be symmetric, or may use public key cryptography. Security concerns exist in regard to privacy over the unauthorized reading of RFID tags, as well as security concerns over server security. Unauthorized readers can use the RFID information to track the package, and so the consumer or carrier, as well as identify the contents of a package. Several prototype systems are being developed to combat unauthorized reading, including RFID signal interruption as well as the possibility of legislation, and 700 scientific papers have been published on this matter since 2002. There are also concerns that the database structure of servers for the readers may be susceptible to infiltration, similar to denial of service attacks, after the App Global Network ONS root servers were shown to be vulnerable. Exploitation Ars Technica reported in March 2006 an RFID buffer overflow bug that could infect airport terminal RFID databases for baggage, and also passport databases to obtain confidential information on the passport holder. Passports, in an effort to make passports more secure, several countries have implemented RFID in passports. 
However, the encryption on UK chips was broken in under 48 hours. Since that incident, further efforts have allowed researchers to clone passport data while the passport is being mailed to its owner. Where a criminal used to need to secretly open and then reseal the envelope, now it can be done without detection, adding some degree of insecurity to the passport system. Shielding, in an effort to prevent the passive a euro o skimming a euro of RFID enabled cards or passports, the U.S. General Services Administration issued a set of test procedures for evaluating electromagnetically opaque sleeves. For shielding products to be in compliance with FIPS 201 guidelines, they must meet or exceed this published standard. Shielding products currently evaluated as FIPS 201 compliant are listed on the website of the U.S. SIA Euro Unregistered Trademark SFIPS 201 Evaluation Program. The United States government requires that when new ID cards are issued, they must be delivered with an approved shielding sleeve or holder. There are contradicting opinions as to whether aluminum can prevent reading of RFID chips. Some people claim that aluminum shielding, essentially creating a Faraday cage, does work. Others claim that simply wrapping an RFID card in aluminum foil only makes transmission more difficult and is not completely effective at preventing it. Shielding effectiveness depends on the frequency being used. Low frequency low FID tags, like those used in implantable devices for humans and pets, are relatively resistant to shielding though thick metal foil will prevent most reads. High-frequency high FID tags are sensitive to shielding and are difficult to read when within a few centimeters of a metal surface. UHF ultra-high FID tags are difficult to read when placed within a few millimeters of a metal surface, although their read range is actually increased when they are spaced to a euro for a cm from a metal surface due to positive reinforcement of the reflected wave and the incident wave at the tag. Temperature exposure, currently, RFID tags are created by gluing an integrated circuit to an inlay. This poses a problem as vibration and high temperatures will loosen the connection. If the IC loses connection with the inlay, the RFID tag will no longer transmit. A new design was filed for patent where the IC is soldered to a circuit board and the circuit board is then soldered to the inlay. This process replaces the adhesive with solder which is much more durable and temperature resistant. Controversies Privacy The use of RFID technology has engendered considerable controversy and even product boycotts by consumer privacy advocates. Consumer privacy experts Catherine Ulbricht and Liz McIntyre are two prominent critics of the SpeakIP technology. The two main privacy concerns regarding RFID are since the owner of an item will not necessarily be aware of the presence of an RFID tag and the tag can be read at a distance without the knowledge of the individual, it becomes possible to gather sensitive data about an individual without consent. If a tagged item is paid for by credit card or in conjunction with use of a loyalty card, then it would be possible to indirectly deduce the identity of the purchaser by reading the globally unique ID of that item. This is only true if the person doing the watching also had access to the loyalty card data and the credit card data, and the person with the equipment knows where you are going to be. Most concerns revolve around the fact that RFID tags affixed to products remain functional even after the products have been purchased and taken home and thus can be used for surveillance and other purposes unrelated to their supply chain inventory functions. The RFID network proved these fears to be unfounded in the premiere episode of their syndicated cable TV series by having RF engineers show how RFID technology really works. RF engineers drove an RFID-enabled van around a building and tried to take an inventory of items inside. They also explored if a passive RFID tag can be tracked from satellite. The concerns raised by the above may be addressed in part by use of the clip tag. The clip tag is an RFID tag designed to increase consumer privacy. The clip tag has been suggested by IBM researchers Paul Moskovitz and Guenta Karjath. After the point of sale, a consumer may tear off a portion of the tag. This allows the transformation of a long-range tag into a proximity tag that still may be read, but only at short range a euro less than a few inches or centimeters. 
the modification of the tag may be confirmed visually. The tag may still be used later for returns, recalls, or recycling. However, read range is both a function of the reader and the tag itself. Improvements in technology may increase read ranges for tags. Having readers very close to the tags makes short range tags readable. Generally, the read range of a tag is limited to the distance from the reader over which the tag can draw enough energy from the reader field to power the tag. Tags may be read at longer ranges than they are designed for by increasing reader power. The limit on read distance then becomes the signal to noise ratio of the signal reflected from the tag back to the reader. Researchers at two security conferences have demonstrated that passive ultra high FID tags normally read at ranges of up to 30 feet, can be read at ranges of 50 to 69 feet using suitable equipment. In January 2004, privacy advocates from Caspian and the German privacy group VOBUD were invited to the Metro Future store in Germany, where an RFID pilot project was implemented. It was uncovered by accident that Metro Payback customer loyalty cards contained RFID tags with customer IDs, a fact that was disclosed neither to customers receiving the cards, nor to this group of privacy advocates. This happened despite assurances by Metro that no customer identification data was tracked and all RFID usage was clearly disclosed. During the UN World Summit on the Information Society between the 16th to November 18, 2005, Founder of the free software movement, Richard Stallman, protested the use of RFID security cards by covering his card with aluminum foil. In 2004 Euro 2005 the Federal Trade Commission staff conducted a workshop and review of RFID privacy concerns and issued a report recommending best practices. RFID was one of the main topics of 2006 Chaos Communication Congress and triggered a big press debate. Topics included, electronic passports, MIFA cryptography and the tickets for the FIFA World Cup 2006. Talks showed how the first real-world mass application of RFID technology at the 2006 FIFA Soccer World Cup worked. Group Monochrome staged a special hack RFID song. Zeitgeist the movie presented RFID chips as a negative technology theorizing that they will one day be used to track the world population and keep them under control. Government control, with the rise of technology, some individuals have grown to fear the loss of rights due to RFID human implantation. By early 2007, Chris Paget of San Francisco, California, showed that RFID information can be pulled from individuals by using only $250 worth of equipment. This supports the claim that with the information captured, it would be relatively simple to make counterfeit passports. According to ZDNET, critics believe that this technology will lead to tracking individuals' every movement and will be an invasion of privacy. Some conceptualize a future where every movement is tracked by the government. In the books by Chips, How Major Corporations and Government Plan to Track Your Every Move by Catherine Albrecht and Liz McIntyre, one is encouraged to imagine a world of no privacy, where your every purchase is monitored and recorded in a database and your every belonging is numbered, where someone many states away or perhaps in another country has a record of everything you have ever bought. What's more, they can be tracked and monitored remotely. Deliberate destruction in clothing and other items, according to an RSA laboratory's FAQ, RFID tags can be destroyed by a standard microwave oven. However some types of RFID tags, particularly those constructed to radiate using large metallic antennas, may catch fire if subjected to this process for too long. This simple method cannot safely be used to deactivate RFID features in electronic devices, or those implanted in living tissue, because of the risk of damage to the host. However the time required is extremely short and the method works in many other non-electronic and inanimate items long before heat or fire become of concern. See also, Automatic Identification and Data Capture, American Samoa, 5678, Belize, Bin Bug, Chipless RFID, Internet of Things, Mass Surveillance, Near Field Communication, Optical RFID, Proximity Card, Resonant Inductive Coupling, RFID on Metal, RSA Blocker Tag, Smart Label, Spit Pass.
Tracking System, RFID in Schools, References External Links, What is RFID? Educational Video by the RFID Network, How RFID Works at How Stuff Works, Privacy Concerns and Proposed Privacy Legislation, RFID at DMOZ, What is RFID? Animated Explanation, Hodge Rave, Bill C. Aloysius, John. Goyle, Sandeep. Does RFID improve inventory accuracy? A preliminary analysis. International Journal of RF Technologies, Research and Applications 1, 45 a Euro 56 DOI, 10.1080-1754573080233833A.